grace, mercy, and peace to you from, from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, uh, Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Well, when we talk about life issues, we've got to start with Jesus. Since we are connected to Jesus as his people, we have life, true life. But in this life, we still have to deal with sickness, heartache, hurt, and death. However, as Christians, as those who follow Jesus, who have life in him, we want to see life thrive. And we certainly included in that, we want to see it start. And so the church is called to champion life, to counteract sin, sickness, and death. Um, today's tough topic is the issue of life and death, and especially focusing on that issue that has been featured so prominently in, in news lately, the issue of abortion. Of course, I, we, are, uh, we want a pro-life attitude, but we want a completely pro-life attitude an attitude that really doesn't depend, it really our, our stance really doesn't depend on what laws are or aren't in place. No matter what the law says in this or any other country, Christians should champion life. That means we want to be certainly pro-babies, also pro-kids, pro-single mothers, as well as pro-married couples. We want to be advocates and helpers of those at every situation and stage of life. Now, that can mean a variety of different things. In some cases, that may mean teaching, for instance, about life and, and where it begins. In other cases, it may be valuing and helping people that the world doesn't see as quite so valuable or worth our time or interaction, people with physical, mental, or developmental challenges. In other cases, it might mean providing help for a young mother who's overwhelmed because of the difficult circumstances of an unplanned pregnancy. And what I mean by that is not just encouraging her to have the baby, but where we have opportunity, helping her to do so. Uh, we maintain that all of human life is wonderfully and fearfully made, as Psalm 139 proclaims. And the truth, the difficult truth, but truth nonetheless, less is that, the, that human life should not be treated as if it were disposable. And that applies to all ages, including the unborn of all races, and, and life is sacred, and it doesn't matter whether someone's Christian or not Christian, it doesn't matter their race, it doesn't matter their sexual preference or religion, all life is sacred. And it's good for us to speak up for those with no voice, and that certainly, I think, includes the unborn. However, there is a gigantic pitfall when it comes to abortion and the church because it's something that's just so easy to become self-righteous about. It's easy to get mad, I think for understandable reasons, because of the tragedy and the innocent life that is lost. But it's also one particular, one specific sin, so it's kind of easy for us to say, well, I didn't do that, or I won't do that, or I never even think about doing that. Now, abortion falls under the category of the fifth commandment, thou shalt not murder. But let's take a little bit closer look at Jesus' definition of murder. He tells us in Matthew chapter 5 that anyone who basically bitterly attacks the character of his brother or sister is guilty of murder. We might say, and I think it's true, murder is never justified, right? But that includes murdering someone in your heart. Viciously attacking those who think abortion is a solution or attacking, for an, attacking vulnerable, hurting, stressed out, and torn young parents is also murder. There's a difference between sharing the truth and love and trying to help and personal attacks. And we certainly want to be wary of that and repent of it. Luther's small catechism can also help us out here. And as we regard the fifth commandment, you shall not murder. What does this mean? Now, I love about Luther's explanations. They're not scripture, but they're really helpful. And that's why we use them. They always say what you shouldn't do, but then they also say what you should do. 
We should, what does this mean? We should fear and love God so that we do not hurt or harm our neighbor in their body. But, here's what we should do, help and befriend them in every bodily need. We need to do both things. However, it's also important for us to remember that our primary responsibility starts with ourselves. We should not hurt or harm our neighbors in their body. Secondly, within the church, we need to teach and encourage one another, certainly I think, the truth about life, including te teaching that abortion takes life, along with, along with all kinds of other ways that we as are guilty of murderous thoughts, words, and deeds. As is always the case in Jesus', uh, in, Jesus in the Gospels and the New Testament, the solution is more about God's intervention and salvation than it is about simply addressing laws alone. Because again, I think this is consistent with Jesus' teaching in the, in the Gospels. Um, the real issue is once again human beings. Starting with ourselves, we certainly want to discourage murder of all kinds and abuse of every kind. We also want to help and befriend our neighbor in every bodily need. Christians will always have the opportunity to, uh, and the obligation to champion life and to help and befriend our neighbors in body and in bodily need. And we dare not allow all our hopes or our goals to hinge on governments or politics or leaders because they're all going to fail us. Rather, our hope, our ultimate hope, is Jesus and in his guidance. And uh, I think it's worth noting that championing, championing um, life is uh, more than just one particular thing. It includes many things. Uh, and again, it's um, some people are passionate about uh, championing the life of unborn babies. Um, that's a very good and God-pleasing thing. Some people are passionate about championing the life of, for instance, foster children or adults in nursing homes. You might champion the life of adults or children with developmental needs or, or those in poverty-stricken countries. All these people are often overlooked or kicked to the curb by our society or our world, and there are many good, God-pleasing, positive ways to champion life, and we certainly want to do that. Um, a Christ-like attitude sees hurt, pain, and guilt as an opportunity, an opportunity to share the healing balm of Christ. As followers of Jesus, we have learned the hard way that we are all capable of sin. It's often not so helpful to demonize people or to cast stones. Rather, what's changed you and me, the, the healing gospel of Jesus that washes away all our sins, that's what can change others as well. After all, the parents involved in abortions also undergo trauma and hurt, even if they don't recognize it right away. Like all the rest of us, they are both perpetrators of sin, but they're also victims of it. The devil tells us something, he lies to us, he promises us things, and then he leaves us alone, hurting, and without help. Our gospel lesson, I think, is an appropriate uh, for our lesson today. and It's the story of the woman caught in adultery, the scribes and the Pharisees bring Jesus a woman who was caught in adultery. They are obsessed with the law and about this sin, which is shameful. They know that the law condemns to death adulterers, but they suspect that Jesus won't want her killed. So they think they've got him trapped. This, this is going to show everyone that Jesus is not such a good Jew, or that's what they think. They act like sin can be cast out from their society by casting stones at this woman. The Pharisees think that Jesus must condemn this woman to death because the law says so. But Jesus saves her life. So I think whose attitude should we uh, try to emulate here? The Pharisees or Jesus? Uh, Jesus encouraged all the people there to consider their own sins. Then when he had rescued this woman from her attackers, he forgave her and told her to go and sin no more. You see, we can see what Jesus wanted. Where is Jesus' heart? Jesus 
wanted to rescue and to forgive. That, as our reading from Colossians says, uh, not malice, slander, or violence should mark Christian attitude towards sin, including sexual sin. What do we want to do? What is our ultimate goal? The ultimate goal is always the gospel. It's rescue and forgiveness. Abortion is wrong. But don't think that simply pointing out sin is the ultimate goal, right? We have to always remember we need both law and gospel. A real and lasting solution cannot be found in pointing out sin, but only in pointing to our Savior, in the forgiveness of sins and in the life that Jesus offers to us and to all who trust and repent in him. Um, one of our purposes is to speak the truth uh, to listen and, and sometimes to even speak hard truths, but still in love. Uh, but our ultimate purpose, our, our joy, uh, is to come alongside and share the gospel. We share it with those who are abandoned, perhaps mother and unborn child, or perhaps a parent or parents dealing with the stress of an unplanned pregnancy. It also includes addressing the guilt physical, spiritual, and emotional trauma of those who have had an abortion. Or of a family trying to raise a child they decided to have in trying circumstances. Uh, kudos to, to those folks, and let's certainly be their allies as well. Abortion is a, a tough topic to tackle like any of these. Uh, but like all of the topics that we tackle, it also points to the much deeper root problems in our world a sinful and broken world, a world that needs Jesus. Even in the heartache and the hurt of sin, we, as God's people, get to the opportunity to preach the gospel, to proclaim life in Jesus Christ. Forgiveness, restoration, mercy, those are the ultimate goal, and those are the kinds of things that can truly change a person's life. The goal is grander than any one particular issue, although every issue, sometimes issues must be addressed, but the grander goal is uh, to offer salvation in our Savior. The world, when it gets its heart set on a goal, often employs you know, a win-at-all-costs attitude. All costs to the opponent, that is. But Jesus had a different sort of win-at-all-costs attitude. Jesus, too, came to win at all costs, but he continued, he came to win at all costs, all costs to himself. Jesus came to show us life, to redeem his opponents, sinners like you and me. May we continue to walk in God's grace, to champion life, and may we always remember that Jesus is the resurrection and the life. And whoever believes in him shall never die. In Jesus' name, amen.